Let's just pop up here. Because Sarah is in the doors of Jar of Something. I just saw a white car pass. That's what. There you go. <laughs> that wasn't her? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. If you're catching us online right now, we are live here at the Lord's Glory Church. We're ready for a live stream of our service this morning. We're ready to worship the resurrected Savior. Amen. Yes. And uh, we, we wish a happy Easter to each and every one of you guys that are watching and ladies that are watching, and uh, we pray that you have a wonderful day with your family, wherever you're at. Yeah. Uh, some of you may be watching in other lands, and uh, we have people that watch as far as uh, India and other lands as well. We get notes from people. And, uh, it's so so exciting and blessed. It's a blessing to come live. Um, we thank God for the Ministry of Sunday International that gave us uh, the ability to have these cameras uh, many years ago, and we have been using them uh, I've, even before the pandemic to stream for decades now, and we thank God for the technology of streaming. Yes, amen. So uh, we are live here, and we're also on YouTube. If you like YouTube as well, you can, you can connect with us on YouTube. You can also go to our website, glorychurch.com, as a connection point. Um, that is live as well right now. Uh, so, so feel free to chat amongst yourselves, tell everybody Happy Easter, uh, feel free to say amen, feel free to send in prayer requests all through the chat and, and comment features on the various places. Um, the only place where we do not have comments available is on glorychurch.com and you can also, uh, you can send a private message to us that way uh, by going to glorychurch.com and hitting the prayer request button and... Um, and then you'll, uh, you'll be able to, to get it to us that way. We will be monitoring these feeds throughout the day. Through, throughout, and, and, and we'll also have a live prayer meeting uh, this evening, an uh, online prayer meeting, as usual, 6 p.m. this evening. So any prayer requests you send in today will be prayed for this evening as well. So, so feel free to send those in, and we will pray for them live tonight, and we'll believe God for breakthrough for 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 you in Jesus name Amen. Yes. father we just thank you for your presence in this place we thank you that you are an awesome king an awesome savior we love you we can't thank you enough for the hope of the resurrection yeah. we can't thank you enough for for coming 2,000 years ago to die a, a cruel death one of the cruelest cruelest forms of execution known to man crucifixion you endured that and you didn't even have any sin you 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 who knew no sin became sin for us lord and we thank you for the fact that 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 we have hope now because of the fact that you went through all of that and it didn't end there it ended in the resurrection because you raised yourself from the dead what an awesome savior you are and you're a healer you're a deliverer Oh, you're a forgiver. You're a, you're, a, uh, new, you're a one who makes us new creations in you. You raise our lives from the dead. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for this service in advance. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Our God is greater this morning. Yeah.
resurrection that enables us to raise a hallelujah.
louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemy. We'll sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. My weapon is a Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And right now, whatever your needs may be, if you need healing in your body in any area, we just right now, we, we uh, say in the name of Jesus, we stretch our hands out towards you via this camera and we say, be made whole in Jesus name and, and, and whatever situations you're facing. Be raised from the dead situations in Jesus' name. Economic situations. Be raised from the dead in Jesus' name. <laughs> Father, I thank you that we raise a hallelujah. We praise you in advance for what you're going to do in these lives that are watching today, in these, in these houses, Lord. Father, those that are believing God, for those that are unsaved, uh, that are, that are uh, not following you, Lord. I thank you for lost loved ones coming in during this Easter season. I thank you for hearts being turned towards you, Savior of all mankind. We worship you this morning. We thank you that you're the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the majesty of all. We worship you, Jesus. We give you praise this morning, God. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We raise a hallelujah in this place. Right there where you're at, I just want you to say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm going to invite my mom to come up and greet the children while I unhinge my guitar here. <laughs> hallelujah. Ah, Jesus is alive. I wanted to say hi to all the kids today, and I want to let you know that I miss you, and there will be an end of this, kids. Uh, people are working on getting people back to church and back to school, and we're going to have so much fun when you get back. We're going to do some really special things, and I want to encourage all of you who are watching today. I was reading the Easter story this morning, and 
the disciples and the women went and found the tomb was empty. The stone had been rolled away. And the angel told them, you know, he is risen. He's not here. He's risen just like he said he would. And I want to remind you, we have a whole Bible full of promises that Jesus has told us he's going to do. And we need to hold on to those things. I want you to stir up your hope this morning and realize that Jesus is alive and the power that raised him from the dead is living on the inside of you if you've accepted what he has did for you on the cross and that resurrection power will keep you going listen the enemy always overplays his hand we're told in the word that if the devil had known what he was doing when he crucified Jesus he wouldn't have done it well all these Christians shut up in their homes seeking God reading the word praying getting close to their families listen something great is getting ready to happen so you just need to be expecting it look for it don't let the enemy steal your joy keep your hope stirred up because Jesus is alive we love you and everything's going to work out okay. God Amen. turns everything around for good. God bless you. And I want to greet the young people, uh, teenagers on this Easter Sunday. And um, I wanted to, I, I, I did a devotional yesterday and we did one the day before that. We've just done a lot of different uh, connections this last week and we thank God for technology uh, I thank God that uh, I figured out how to do IGTV this week <laughs> and put it on there as well. So um, uh, we, we have been, uh, as a youth group, we have been doing the, uh, an online Bible study uh, through Uversion. So if you still want to, uh, to connect with that, you can look up Easter Hope. And there's a, on, on our Generation Now Facebook page, there is a little a uh, button where you can join our Bible study and see who's joined and and kind of connect with that and walk through the Bible study with us during this Easter week. It's not too late, and uh, there's places where you can comment and different things. And so feel free to uh, to click that link found on our Facebook page, um, and it's also I believe on Instagram as well on our Generation Now Instagram. But I wanted to share with you guys something really cool. We, uh, but before I do that, actually, I want to show a video to lead into it um, because there are a lot of things that have changed uh, in recent days, a lot of things that are different, but there's one thing, there's one person that hasn't changed, and I want to play this video in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. Amen, amen, amen. We've had a lot of things lately that have been shifting and changing in our world due to the uh, coronavirus. A lot of different things going on, you know, uh, and I could go through the list, but I won't because you know all of them. <laughs> and I want to tell you something. There is one who hasn't changed. And the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 8, it says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. You can know without a shadow of a doubt that he is still there. He is still Lord. He is still powerful. He is still risen. He is still alive. The scars are still there to prove that he loved you so much that he died for you. And then he raised himself from the dead. He is risen and he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he can be that, 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 uh, that unchanging factor in your life every day that you live. Hold on to him. Hold on to him. Uh, especially to the young people right now and every, every person watching, I want you to understand there is someone that you can hold on to that doesn't shift with time, that doesn't shift with, with circumstance. There's someone who loves you, and in the middle of all this, you can grab a hold of his hand and know that he can keep you steady. He can keep you steady. He's our hope. We raise a hallelujah to him this morning. And, and we thank God for the unshifting, unchanging Savior that we serve. Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. God bless you. And I want to uh, go ahead. And we, it is happy time in this place. Amen. And in your home. And um, the Bible says in um, Luke chapter 6 and verse 38, it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men give un shall, shall men give unto your bosom for with the same measure that you use it will be measured back to you you got to let go in order to get it back you got to let go in order for it to be multiplied if i was to plant a seed in the ground Say, uh, let's just pick watermelon, for instance. I like watermelon. If I were to plant a seed, a watermelon seed in the ground, and then the next day I wanted to go check on it, so I pulled it out of the ground and then and looked at it a little bit and then said, yeah, it doesn't look like much has changed, so I'm going to put it back in the ground. If I did that every day, nothing would ever happen to that seed. So I want to encourage you, let go and let God in your financial seed this morning. Take the financial seed of the tithe, uh, which is the first 10% of your income, as you plant it into this local church, or if, you, if you're watching and you're planted in another local church, planting seed in that local church, what, you know, uh, planting that seed into that good ground as a tithe, and then also, over and above your tithe, we have the areas of missions and the building fund uh, here at our church where we have... The building fund uh, helps to fund special projects around here. We just got a bunch of lighting done in here because of that fund and all the, a sign that was uh, needing to be restored, and we got that done. And uh, thank God that that, that was given. And uh, we just, that, that faithful seed planting happened, and that's what caused it. And, and you know what? It doesn't end there. What happens is that seed germinates in your own life, and in the lives of those around you, you begin to see a harvest happen. You look and you say, whoa. You know, just like when you plant the seed of the watermelons, all of a sudden you look and there's watermelons there. You know, I've been watering that seed. I've been praying over that seed. And all of a sudden, watermelons. So that's what you're looking for this morning. You're looking for the fact that God is faithful to his word. He says, give and it will be given to you. So plant that seed this morning. How do you do that? Glorychurch.com is, is, the, is the place, and Donate but Now is the button at the top there. Donate Now. Click that. Follow the instructions, uh, and uh, you can use your PayPal account. You can use um, a credit card or debit card, and um, you can give uh, this morning right now. 
Um, if you would like to mail it in, there is a way to do that. The screen has the address on it. Um, there, 461 Artesian Plaza Drive, Humble, Texas, 77338. There it is. And uh, feel free to mail that in. We have received some in the mail. We thank God for your faithful support. We cannot survive without that faithful giving that you have. And we thank God you enable us to pay the bills and keep coming to you live on these streams to pay the bills to keep the lights on and the water running and stuff like that. And uh, we, we love each and every one of you. And we look forward to the day when we can see y'all walking through the doors again. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise God. Well, hallelujah. God bless each and every one of you. Well, praise the Lord. Happy Resurrection Day, everyone. And... Uh, we can't see you, but we know you're there on the other side of that lens. And we uh, appreciate all of you that have been viewing online and our, the reports that I'm getting from uh, our staff here is that the viewing is way up. So that means a lot of you are watching and, and we're still co connected that way. Thank God for Sunday International for getting us online to start with and providing cameras and and uh, all kinds of stuff and even uh, uh, upgrading our cameras and so they have been a blessing we've been coming to you online for many years but so we already had this in place yes, for when this happened so God is is really good isn't he yes. well let's hold our Bibles up if you're watching online you can hold up uh, your Bible or electronic device and let's say this together Heavenly Father Thank you for the Bible. I believe the Bible. It's your word. It's the truth. It's a love letter from you to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to bring you a message uh, entitled Resurrection Hope. Do you know that we have a different kind of hope than the hope that the world has? The world, the unbelieving world, has hope that's based uh, 100% on circumstances. They have to see circumstantial evidence is based on their circumstances. But we have a different kind of hope. We have a hope that's based on the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank God He has risen. And let me read you one place where this is in the Scriptures. It's in... 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, and we'll start there. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Hallelujah! He's, we have been begotten again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We're talking about resurrection hope that only comes through Jesus Christ, and it's not based on what we see with our circumstances. It's based on the promises of God, blood-bought promises that we know are yes and amen because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Without the resurrection, these promises would mean nothing. But because of the resurrection, they mean everything. They're alive. We have a living hope. A living hope. Amen. I, I think of a... You know, Abraham was a foreshadow and a type of a Christian. And, well, the Bible says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse, having become a curse for us, having hung on a tree. The Bible says, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus and we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And Abraham and Sarah were told that they were going to uh, have a child oh, yeah. that would carry on and that uh, the, uh, the promise that God had made to Abraham that he would be the father of many, many nations. And 
she was 90 and he was 100. But you know what? They had to change their hope. They, 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 circumstances wouldn't, wouldn't work in a situation like that. Let me read you that in Romans chapter 4. Uh, and faith is important. We have to trust in the God of the promises. Amen. Amen. <laughs> faith and hope travel together. They're partners. Now faith, well, Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, yes. the evidence of things not seen. So uh, hope uh, focuses uh, or majors on the promises of God, and faith majors on the God of the promises. And you got to have both. you got to have that trust in God, faith in the God who made the promises, but then you've got to have uh, hope in those promises. And hope, from a biblical viewpoint, hope means confident expectation. The world looks on hope like this. It looks on hope as a very weak word. It's like, oh, well, maybe. Uh, I hope so. Maybe. That's the way the world looks on hope. But hope, biblical hope, is alive. Oh, yeah. Amen. It's, it's resurrection hope. Praise it's God. eternal. Yes. And it's not based on what we see with our eyes. As a matter of fact, one verse says hope that is seen is not hope. Yeah. <laughs> hope is based on the promises of God. Yeah. So in Romans chapter 4, verse 16, Therefore is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only the, to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him of whom he believed. God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Now listen to this verse, verse 18 of Romans chapter 4. Who contrary to hope, in hope, believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Wow. Abraham and Sarah, they both had to get a hold of real hope. They, they had against hope, it says, who contrary to hope, contrary to the world's view of hope, in hope, and here you see a, a prefigure of resurrection hope, believed based on that promise that God had made them that he would be the father of many nations. Hallelujah. Are you getting this? Yes, sir. Let me read you 1 Peter 1, 3 again. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope yes. through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Yes. Amen. You know, most of us, we, we came to the end of... Uh, Self works in order to get saved. I mean, the people, most people, by the time they came to the cross of Christ, they had tried a lot of different things to make their lives work. But when we finally just come to the end of trying to work our way there, trying to achieve it through our own merits, and we, we give up on the hope of this world, and we embrace the hope that is in Jesus Christ, and we just say, Lord, I can't. Do it. It's going to take the merits of Jesus. It's going to take the, the, the message of his death, burial, and resurrection. That's the only way I'll ever be saved. Then we actually received eternal life. We're raised from spiritual deadness into newness of life. Being born again is a type of resurrection in itself. Amen. Now, in the future, our, our physical bodies are going to be resurrected as well. Amen. Amen. But we've already, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is already living in us. The Holy Spirit. When we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. You know, I was thinking about what we're going through as a nation. We need resurrection hope in so many areas these days. Uh, with this coronavirus and our, we, we went into this with the strongest economy in our lifetime and we've seen that just die on us. 
We've seen over 20,000 Americans now that uh, have died from this uh, coronavirus. We can be thankful that the figures are lower than the models had indicated. But think about that, that's 20,000 families and friends of, of people who have died from the corona uh, virus. And every one of those need this resurrection hope. Every one of those who have suffered loss. And of course, we know people die every day for other reasons too, in car accidents, other types of sickness and so forth. But thank God that we can have resurrection hope when a loved one yes. departs. Matthew chapter 5, verse 4, Jesus said, Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. The problem with the world, when I say the world, I'm talking about those who don't have faith in Jesus Christ and have hope in his resurrection. The problem there is that they don't get to the part that says, for they shall be comforted. They never leave the mourning of the lost loved one because they don't have that resurrection hope. But thank God, you know, Paul said, we don't mourn the way the world mourns. Right. Because, yes, we mourn when a loved one uh, leaves. We miss them. But we don't live there. It came to pass. We get through that because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you shout how Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Verses 13 through 18, Paul further talked about this comfort that we have through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Beginning in verse 13 of 1 Thessalonians 4, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. He's talking about those who have departed. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. But thank God we've got hope. Amen. But lest you saw as others who have no hope. And for all of those who have lost loved ones through this a plague, you have hope. Verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. When we talk about sleep, he's talking about the body in the grave. But we also know that in 2 Corinthians 5, 8, Paul said, we're confident, yes, well, pleased to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So when a, that loved one that departed, if they believed in Jesus, when they depart, departed, when they died, their spirit and soul, the inner person immediately was in the presence of Jesus Christ. And they come back with Jesus on the day of resurrection. And that's what Paul is talking about. And then he says in verse 15, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain, now here's something that's very interesting here. We who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. <clears throat> the rapture of the church and the resurrection of the dead occur on the same day. He said, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Their bodies are going to be glorified and rise up and be joined to their spirits and souls who are already with the Lord, who are coming back with Him. And then verse 17, Then we who are alive and remain with everything we're seeing happen, I believe His coming is very soon. He could come during the middle of this message. <laughs> then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up the, uh, that's, that's translated from the Greek. If we translate it from the Latin, we would say raptured there. Rapier, raptured. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up or raptured together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Praise God. There's a resurrection ahead for us. Amen. Glory to God. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 18. For surely there is a hereafter, and your hope will not be cut off. Amen. This is going to happen. This promise is yes, 
and amen like all the promises of God. Hallelujah. So for those who have lost love, and you say, well, I don't know whether my loved one had accepted, Je there's no indication that loved one had accepted Jesus while he or she was alive. Sometimes that happens. You know you don't know. But don't lose hope because who knows what happened to that person moments before they departed. I mean, I, I've heard uh, s stories of people finding out later where they thought a loved one went to the wrong place and found out later someone witnessed to them or there was some way they knew that they did accept Jesus Christ in the last moments of their life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I remember a story I read about years ago, and I'm trying to recall exactly how it went, but a person was, uh, uh, had just been really down because uh, that a, a person had a, 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 I believe it was their um, uh, mother or father that died, and uh, they, didn't, they thought that they had died and uh, perished and gone to hell. And th they were uh, hitchhiking. And a person picked them up, you know, as God would have it uh, to, for a ride, and they began to share. And when the person told him his name, this person that gave him a ride was a minister. And he shared with the person whose loved one had departed how he had visited that person and led them to the Lord moments before they died. Wow. And that person had been depressed for, uh, this had happened like uh, many, many years earlier, had been depressed all those years thinking their loved one had gone to hell rather than heaven when, when in, a, in effect they had made that decision. And there was a witness who was there with them who led them in that decision. So we shouldn't make assumptions. And if we're going to make them, let's make the right assumption. Let's make our, our assumptions in hope. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. But you know, when, when we, someone departs, it's hard on people unless we have that hope. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 53, verses 3 to 5, this Isaiah prophesied about the works that Jesus would do on the cross at Calvary many centuries before it happened. And in verse 3 of chapter 53, Isaiah prophesied, He is despised. He's talking about Jesus, the Messiah. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. I believe that with all my heart. Amen. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. We don't have to fear this virus. Yes, we'll do what we can in the natural, exercise wisdom. But we don't have to fear this. Because we believe in a God who heals all diseases. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Hallelujah. And that's speaking, that's pointing to our redemption because uh, it says in the next verse, who has redeemed our lives from destruction. The psalmist there is writing about redemption. He's pointing to the New Testament, the new covenant, who heals all our diseases. They had this promise in the Old Testament. Let me tell you, the shadow and type cannot be greater than the substance. That's a theological principle. They had physical healing and miracles in the Old Testament. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in the book of Hebrews it says we have a better covenant based on better promises. Hey. Certainly it would not leave physical healing out. That's right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. But he is born... Uh, he has uh, borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. And you know, when, we are, when something's brought grief or sorrow to us, we can take it to the cross and trust in God yeah. who has given us resurrection hope. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus himself said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me yeah. 
because he has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. It says a contrite and broken heart, he will in no way despise or turn away. I believe that. You know, there are people, and, and I, you know, I know the world will do all it can, man will do all he can to help man, but sometimes these grief groups and all the problem there is they get into it and never get out of it. The gospel, there's the promise of deliverance from that, from that grief and from that sorrow. Jesus went to the cross for the healing of the total man, the total woman, spirit, soul, and, and body. Amen. And you know, when we go through that, I, I, I've lost, my, well, say lost, I know where they are, and I'm going to be with them one day, but uh, my parents are in heaven, Shores parents. I have one older brother, many uh, friends that have departed, and I, I'm not going around uh, grieving about them every day. I'm looking forward to seeing them again uh, in paradise, in heaven. Amen. Meanwhile, I'm enjoying the paradise that God has brought to my heart while I'm here on this earth. Amen. Well, we can comfort others as we are comforted by the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians Chapter 1, verses 3 to 4 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, yeah. who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort which, which we ourselves are comforted by God. Yeah. I love this of a verse, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 11. I mentioned it earlier. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Hallelujah. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living in those of us who have accepted Him as our personal Lord and Savior. The Holy Ghost who specializes in raising the dead. Praise God. And, you know, that's in our mortal bodies now. Now we have, the, we have the power of the resurrection dwelling in us now. The hope of the resurrection is in us now. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. You may be facing some, a situation that, you know, it, it looks like, oh, there's no, no hope. There is hope. That's not based on your circumstances, but based on the Word of God. So many people, millions of Americans have lost their jobs. They've seen their retirement funds evaporate, uh, savings evaporate, investments. Uh, they, they've seen uh, d their uh, businesses closed. We've seen, you know, our, our churches. You know, we are, are you know, we're, we're respecting the government authorities, and it's only for a temporary time, and we're doing the best we can with our streaming live. But, you know, we have to understand that God can raise all. He's raised, raises businesses back up. He can, if you don't get that job back, He can provide a better job. Right. Amen. And he can, he can bless your finances and bless your retirement accounts and your, uh, you know, we don't have borns and, uh, like they did in the Old Testament. We've got... Uh, investment in instruments, savings accounts, uh, stocks and so forth that people invest in. It looks like all that's been destroyed. A lot of it has. But God can raise it back up. And I believe it's already begun. In that era, we had the, uh, the uh, they said it's the greatest increase in the stock market that we've had in 50 years last week. So I believe that resurrection hope is already beginning to manifest. Amen. I'm believing that we're going to see more people in the churches than ever once we're congregating back. People are going to be hungry to get together and be able to congregate in person together. I miss all of you. I believe you miss your church. But we're doing the best we can with the live streaming. Thank God for that. Hallelujah. But God can raise all these things. He can raise them all uh, back up, and he will raise them back up. Can you shout hallelujah? Amen. Praise God. You students, you know, they're out of school. They, they miss their classmates, their teachers. They're doing the best they can. Parents are having to homeschool. You know, they're also 
re receiving education online, many of them. But God will, I believe he's going to raise our schools up better than ever before. Oh Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, our nation, it seems like our nation has just come to a halt. And not only our nation, but nations all over the world have been fighting this thing and have been, uh, had stay-at-home laws enacted, quarantines and all of that. And it just seems like so many dreams have perished and died. But let me tell you, there is resurrection hope. And God is able to raise it back up more powerfully and better than ever before. And that's what we're believing God for. We're believing God for better careers. Amen. Uh, that those businesses, when they come back, they're going to come back stronger than ever. Amen. Your uh, savior is going to come back. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. God is our provider. You know, through all this, it just reminds us that God it is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And let me tell you, if you've been sowing into the kingdom of God, you've got an account that a thief can't break into. It won't rust. It can't be destroyed. And even if you've seen your uh, bank accounts diminish or your retirement funds diminish, you've got an account in heaven. If you've been sowing into your local church, into Christian ministry, you've got a, an account in heaven that thieves can't get into, viruses can't get into, depressions can't get into, they can't be corrupted, and it's there for you, and God will open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon you that you cannot hold because of resurrection hope and power through the resurrection. Amen. He can bless you in ways you cannot even imagine. You can, in ways you've not even thought of. And I'll close with this. I think of Moses and the children of Israel. They were, God had anointed Moses, called him to lead them out of Egyptian bondage and tyranny and slavery. And there they were. They had the Red Sea facing them and Pharaoh's army behind them and nowhere to go. How many of you have ever been there? You know, you know, this time a lot of us, you know, we're, Sure, and I've been going for walks quite a bit in the neighborhood and so forth, but you feel like you're just there with nowhere to go. But Moses said to the people, they were faced with the Red Sea on one side, Pharaoh's army on the other. Moses said to the people in the Exodus chapter 14, verse 13, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you say, see today, you shall see no more forever. Then a few verses down, God told Moses, he said, but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go through on dry land through the midst of the sea. And Moses lifted up that wooden rod, that wooden staff. You know, Christ has been lifted up. When we put, when we come to the, you know, when you come to the point where you're just at the end of self, you, you don't know, uh, you can't see the way out of that situation. You're in a perfect place for God's resurrection power to come into play. Amen. Because you've come to the place of, of the cross of Christ and his resurrection. And when Moses lifted up that wooden staff that prefigured the lifting up of Jesus Christ on the wooden cross cross at Calvary. Yes. Amen. Yes. And God parted that Red Sea. Yes. The wind of God blew. It said the wind, the, well, the, the wind, God sent an east wind that blew it and separated it. Yes. And when we come to the cross of Christ, there's a wind that blows across our hearts. The wind of the Holy Spirit. And it provides a way when there was no way. God does that. Yes. He has roads that nobody else knows about. Roads of resurrection hope yes. and power. Yes. Amen. Amen. Later, the psalmist wrote, Psalm 77, verse 19, Your way was in the sea. Your path 
in the great waters, and your footsteps were not known. There was a path in the sea, a road beneath the sea that no one knew was there, but God had prepared it. Amen. And you know, beginning with, uh, what was his name, Wyatt, I believe, that first discovered this. Ron Wyatt discovered uh, the, who many scholars now believe is the actual Red Sea crossing in the Sea of Aquaba, which they also got the location of Mount Sinai wrong, too. It's right on the other side of uh, Aquaba, and they found the uh, it, uh, archaeological evidence to confirm that as well, even a split rock where water had gushed out. And uh, that location uh, there, there's a sandy, uh, there's a, a beach where millions of people could gather. At that's this one spot, and underneath the Red Sea there, there's a sandy bottom. It's still far beneath the sea, but it's a sandy bottom that slopes down. And they, uh, uh, one scientist from Sweden did a lot of uh, excavations, and, and they, they went down with divers, and they found chariot wheels and all kinds of, which were the style of Egyptian uh, chariots of that day. And the evidence is all there that that's where they crossed over. And there was a sea. God had prepared a road underneath the Red Sea that was, uh, was uh, sandy and soft that the people could walk on, on and where millions of people could cross. But on either side was coral. And, and the, the animal and the people's feet would have been uh, injured and the people would have been injured trying to cross anywhere else. And God parted it and there that road was that God had prepared, a road that no one knew was there. And that, that's been confirmed with modern day uh, archaeology a road that no one knew was there. God's got roads for you that no one else knows is there. Just trust in Him. Put your hope in Him. Believe in this new and living hope that God has given us through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Resurrection hope. And He can turn any situation you're in, He can turn it around and make it better than you ever dreamed. Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, we thank you for the word of God that does not return void. Lord, we thank you for all of those, Lord, that are watching this morning. Lord, if there are any that haven't accepted you as their personal Lord and Savior, I just pray, pray that you would convince them to make that decision now. In Jesus' name. Now faith is, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. You've come to your place of now. And you're saying, yes, now I need to make this decision. Let me tell you, you come on the basis of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, on the merits of Jesus. None of us can earn our way to heaven. It's only on the merits of Jesus that we can be saved. All he asks of you is a decision to accept him. No one's over a decision away from having a personal relationship with God. If that's what you want, I want to lead you in a prayer of decision right now. There's just a few of us uh, uh, staff here, but uh, we're going to say this together. And, and if you haven't accepted Jesus, don't postpone it. No one's over a heartbeat or a breath away from eternity. It's dangerous to postpone that decision. Say it with us now. Heavenly Father, have mercy on me, a sinner. I'm sorry for the sins, the mistakes that I have made with my life. I repent, and I turn to Jesus Christ for forgiveness. Jesus, I accept you now and forever as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe you're alive, and I invite you to come live in my heart and to take charge of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. If you said that prayer with sincerity of heart, you've received a new beginning. Resurrection hope has come alive in you. You've received a new life in Christ. You're a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. There's resurrection hope, resurrection life in you now. Praise God. Hallelujah.
for any that are fighting sickness. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is already in you. He can heal any sickness, any disease. He's already in your mortal body. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you have sickness anywhere, whether it's coronavirus or anything else, just put a hand on the part of your body that would represent a, a, your, where the sickness is and lift the other hand in praise to God. And we're going to pray for you. We want to pray again for you before we close. We just say, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Jesus, that you took those stripes and carried them to the cross for our healing. We put our faith in you. We trust in you. We put our hope in you. And I say, be whole. Be whole in the name of Jesus. Sickness, go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For resurrection power, bringing health and healing to your mortal body. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isaiah 51, 10. Are you not the one who dried up the sea? The waters of the great deep that made the depths of the sea a road for the redeemed to cross over. Praise God. There's a road for all of us. God has a wonderful plan for all of our lives. There's a great future ahead for all of us. For I know the thoughts. I love Jeremiah 29, 11. We'll close with this. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Yes. God bless you as we celebrate his resurrection yes. today. And I look forward to the near in the near future to all of us being able to congregate in person together. Yes. We love you. We miss you. Yes. Uh, feel free to call us, text us, uh, email us, Facebook message us. Yes. Uh, we we uh, love staying in contact with you. And God bless you and your families. And we'll be back with you. We're going to have something new this week. We're going to stream live Tuesday. Our Tuesday prayer meeting at noon, we're going to stream live. Yeah. And then we'll be Wednesday night at 7 o'clock streaming uh, live for the uh, Wednesday night full service. And who knows? You know, Governor Abbott's supposed to be releasing uh, new directives uh, this week regarding uh, when we can crank things back up <laughs> amen and i'm just praying it'll be much sooner rather than later in jesus name amen and uh meanwhile we're all going to get through this we're all going to get through this and you know what we're going to come out uh, uh we're not going to come out of this bitter we're going to come out better we're not going to come out of this burn we're going to come out of this refined we're going to come out of this with our our faith stronger than ever and our hope stronger than ever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us. A happy Easter, happy Resurrection Day. And God, God bless you all. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for going to the cross. Thank you for, for uh, rising from the dead. You yourself, in referring to your body, you said, destroy this temple, and in three days... I will raise it up. Amen. You raised it up, Jesus. We love you. We adore you. God bless all of you.